Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fixing Arsenal. In today's episode, we have the final group game in the Europa League against Feyenoord and we have the North London derby against Spurs. There's been a few games that you've missed since the last time we met, the first of which was a 3-0 home win against Newcastle. Uh, a hat-trick for Nicolas Pepe, uh, a penalty involved as well, a fantastic performance by him and a good performance from the team all round. Next up was a 5-1 thrashing of Aston Villa at home in the Premier League once again. Kieran Tini, Nicolas Pepe, Mesut Ozil, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Reese Nelson with the goals. And then we rotated pretty heavily for the game against Dynamo in the Europa League away from home and it cost us. We ended up drawing 2-2. Lacazette and Kalasnach had put us 2-0 in front but Osage just after half time and Amal Kui, 95th minute own goal equalised for Dynamo. And this is why I don't really like rotating. You'll see next. We followed that up with a massively disappointing 1-1 one -one away draw against Everton. A match we did dominate, but we didn't create enough good opportunities. Alex Awobi had put them in front nine minutes in. Bellerin ended up equalising just before half-time. And despite having a ton of shots, we just couldn't break them down. And that's why I don't like rotating. We bounced back, though, this time away from home against Bournemouth, where we won 3-1. Thomas Partey, Kieran Tini, and Aubameyang with the goals. David Luiz missing a penalty very late on as well. And finally, was a 3-0 home win against Southampton. Pepe Bellerin and Lacazette with the goals. Another missed penalty in there. But uh, again, another good win to keep the pressure up on Liverpool, who did get beat again, but they're still top. With the one point ahead of us, and we are the top four sort of foreman now. Liverpool, Arsenal, Leicester and Manchester United have pulled away from the likes of West Ham, Man City and Spurs. But um, that's not to say they won't come back in with the likes of Man City and Chelsea and stuff. But... It looks like, to me anyway, Man, Man U, Arsenal, Liverpool for the title. That might be the challenge. So for today's game, uh, the first tie will be against Feyenoord at home. This game will decide who finishes top of the table and who finishes second. Uh, I, th I believe in the Europa League now, if you finish top, you skip the first knockout round. Whereas if you finish second, you go into the first knockout round. So it is key for us to get through this game with a win ideally we are at home and to be honest with you we've been pretty unstoppable at home so i would expect us to be able to come out with a win today and this is how we're going to line up we're going to go full strength leno in goal bellerin socrates and david louise thomas party kieran taney danny sabellos is not starting our manager what are you doing oh gwen is injured and Torreira is injured so maybe he is starting <laughs> nicholas pepe on the right hand side mesut ozil in behind obamiang and lacazette i'm still tinkering with lacazette's role to see how I can get the best out of him. Because he's only scored 4 goals in 14 Premier League games. And whilst his average rating is quite good. So he's obviously getting involved in the general player. I would like to see a little bit more end product. Whether that's through assists or goals. So he's playing as a complete forward today. Another tweak to the tactic as well. We have shorted our passing range. Just to see if we can retain possession a little bit more. We've got plenty of coverage on both sides of the wings. And through the centre. So... Using the shorter passing style, we should be able to retain possession a little bit more. But as Feyenoord come at us with a 4-1-2-3, it looks pretty similar to the side they played against us the very first time we played them. Let's get the kick off. First highlight of the game, Kieran Tini is brought down by the Feyenoord player. And that wasn't the first highlight. This is Mesut Ozil plays in the corner. It's cleared only as far as David Luiz. They managed to get clear though. And Larson brings it down nicely in Toonstra can bring it forward. But David Luiz again. And they are pushed forward massively. Nicholas Pepe is in behind. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and he can't put it away. Mesut Ozil plays a bat to Nicolas Pepe, who finds Aubameyang, who surely was offside. He was. Another highlight now, it's Feyenoord playing the ball in this time. We managed to get a clear, and Nicolas Pepe can drive at the Feyenoord defence. He absolutely ghosts past his man, and again, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. He can't put it in the back of the net. It's highlight after highlight in the, in the first 10 minutes. Kieran Tini plays the ball in and goes all the way through to Bellerin on the other side. He gets the ball in, Mesut Ozil's there. Another header by Ozil would have been nice. The highlight does continue though, so that might mean that Ozil chance wasn't what they wanted to show me. It falls to Aubameyang, back to Pepe. He's got a good strike on him if he goes for it. Goes back to Lacazette. We'll start again with Bellerin on this right-hand side. He goes for goal. Another good save by the keeper. Keeps us at nil-nil. 12 minutes in now. Feyenoord with the free kick. Go for goal. And they very nearly took the lead there. Um, their goalkeeper's having a good game. And I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up going 1-0 down, to be honest. Bellerin... Gets the goal kick from the final goalkeeper and gets in at the box. And Senesir has, has didn't even bring him down. He just tripped him and he has resulted in a penalty. Now, we've missed the last two. Nicholas Pepe steps up and he buries this one. So we go 1-0 up 
21 minutes in. It's Hector Bellerin who wins the penalty and Nicolas Pepe who slots it away for his 14th goal of the season. He's been absolutely fantastic on that right-hand side. Him and Aubameyang have really been carrying us in the final third. Another highlight now, just before half-time, Mesut Ozil picks up the ball, plays back to Sabellos, to Pepe, to Sabellos, Kieran So much space, he's got to bury that, and he does. Kieran Tini from left wing back with his sixth goal of the season. An assist for Danny Sabellos, who's playing in central midfield today, which is nice to see. Some decent play from us on the right-hand side. We keep the ball well on the edge of the box. And Sabellos with an absolutely beautiful ball finding Tini in space. And that's a great finish. And there we are, half-time. Arsenal 2, Feyenoord 0. Not really causing us too many problems uh, defensively. They did cause us a bit of problems early on in terms of getting the goal. But thankfully, that penalty seems to have unlocked the door a little bit. And I expect to see more goals. Mesut Ozil with the corner. 66 minutes in. It's cleared by Feyenoord. But Thomas Partey is first to the ball. Socrates. We are pushed quite heavy up now. So if they end up winning the ball, there could be a counter-attacking opportunity. But we're keeping possession well. Kieran Tierney receives the ball in the box again. And Kieran Tierney. What a finish that is, my son. Pretty much the same sort of finish he's done for his first goal at dear. His seventh goal of the season. And lovely little assist by Thomas Partey as well. I signed Thomas Partey fully anticipating him just being a backup option. But he has been absolutely fantastic for us. And Kieran Tierney as well has proven that he's probably the better option compared to Kolasinac. 20 minutes to go. Danny Sabellos with the highlight here. Plays it back to Socrates. Again, Kieran Tierney and Bellerin. Giving us so much space out wide. Pushing up. And uh, for the cutting in of the wingers on either side. Thomas Partey plays it to Tierney again. Can he get the ball in? He can. Pepe is there. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. Don't celebrate. That would go. Corner for Feyenoord. It's played in. They go close again from the set piece. We're going to keep Kieran Tierney on because the potential of a hat rig is there. But we'll take off Nicholas Pepe. Our two best performing players probably. Well, the two of the goals at the very least. We'll get Reese Nelson on for him. Thomas Partey's having a great game as well, as I've said. But Callum Chambers is going to come on for him. And Malqui will come on for Hector Bellerin. David Louise with a free kick just in the final half. It's cleared. We'll play back to Louise and Aubameyang's lurking on the left-hand side. Plays it back to Tierney. Hatrick? No, not to be. Three minutes of out of time. Bern Leno gives the ball away from a goal kick. Thankfully, David Louise is alert. Is Tierney alert? He is. He gets it rid of. And it looks like it's still going to be a fine order attack, though, as they take control of possession in the midfield. Overlapping from Patrick on the right-hand side is great. Malqui manages to get rid. Nelson gets rid again, and Aubameyang brings it down beautifully, and he's got the pace to do all of these. He gets past three defenders. He goes for goal. He gets his 20th goal of the season, a fantastic solo effort. He receives the ball pretty much on the halfway line and beats, well, two defenders at the very least and gets the fourth goal of the game for us. Fantastic strike, fantastic goal, and a fantastic performance. And there we have it, Arsenal 4, Feyenoord 0. A pretty routine victory in the end, but that confirms our position at the top of the Europa League. Only three days or so to go um, until the Spurs game, so we will have to rest the players from training. But they, there's the co uh, confirmation. 16 points from six games in the Europa League isn't a bad haul whatsoever. And now our t uh, focus turns back to the Premier League. Oh, just one other bit of business that I forgot to mention um, from our board, where they have actually given us an increased transfer budget. We now have £80 million to spend in January. So I look forward to that episode. So we're back for the Spurs game and only one change to the starting eleven from the final game. Matteo Guendouzi comes in for the injured Danny Sabellos in the centre of midfield. Let's get a kick off. Spurs are doing okay in the league. I think they're currently sitting in seventh position. They're one of the chasing pack for the top four spots. And obviously they've still got a fantastic side on football manager. But I do think we've got a better team. Um, I, I honestly do. They've got one of the best strikers in the league. He isn't really smashing the goals in. 19 appearances, 8 goals. Deli Ali, Lo Celso, Lucas Moura. It's a standard Spurs side. Let's see how we get on today. Away from home might be difficult. First highlight of the game. Mesut Ozil with a corner. It's played in. Aubameyang's back post. And he gets the first goal of the game. 5 minutes in. His 21st goal of the season. And we will take that all day. Simple corner. Not often we'll score from a set piece. But we'll take it. Uh, Hugo Lloris with no chance at the back post. Aubameyang rising higher. And whoever was number 27. Ericsson now with the ball. Four spurs. Spreads it beautifully to Danny Rose on that left-hand side. Socrates gets the challenge in. He goes for goal. Deli Ali picks it up in the box. Can we get rid? We can't. Harry Kane is there. He gets his ninth goal of the season. Deli Ali with the assist. Um, our lead doesn't last very long. 
10 minutes in now there is another highlighted spurs on the attack once again down this right hand side Lucas Moura plays the ball in can we get rid Pepe tries to get rid of it but he gives it back to Walker Peters on this right hand side t &E with some excellent defensive work gives the ball away again though and Walker Peters is uh, tenacious at the very least Lucas Moura plays it in we we'll manage to get clear and Gwen Doozy now can we break he plays the ball down the left hand side for Aubameyang in a pocket of space he gets past his man but Hugo Lloris with a comfortable save Highlight now, Thomas Partey picks it up after a Spurs clearance. We are pushed pretty far up the pitch, so if we give the ball away, we're in dire straits. But we retain possession, and Hector Bellerin brings it down this right-hand side. He whips it in, back post, Kieran Taney's there, and he hits the bar. Nicholas Pepe brings the ball down this right-hand side. He's got the overlapping Bellerin in support, which he uses quite well. Mesut Ozil, it picks out Guendouzi, who goes for goal. That was an ambitious strike, mate. I uh, don't think you've scored so far this season. Taney on this left-hand side tries to get the ball in. He gives it away and Christian Eriksen can bring it away now for Spurs. Plays the ball over the top. Harry Kane is in behind. Can we stop him? Leno can. Another highlight now. 27 minutes in. And Spurs are playing the ball about in the defence, but they're playing it about well. So it doesn't look like we're going to nick the ball and get a cheeky goal. Christian Eriksen finds what he's... Walker Peters is having a hell of a time down this right-hand side, causing all sorts of problems. And Lucas Moura with a great ball in at the back post. Is that offside? It is. Thank God for that. We remain at 1-1. Nicholas Pepe, one of the very players of the season so far, has picked up a knock. So it's going to be Reese Nelson coming on for him on that right-hand side. Nelson with the free kick. Plays it in. It falls to Aubameyang in the box. He's not offside. He gets his 22nd goal of the season. And we go 2-1 up 42 minutes in. Reese Nelson coming on and proven to be a difference maker straight away. It's Socrates with the header down. And Aubameyang with a good finish. And that's it for half-time. Spurs 1, Arsenal 2. A decent first half, but Spurs have definitely proved to be far trickier than I did think. We'll kick off for the second half, hoping for no more injuries more than anything. And 46 minutes in, there's the first highlight. Eriksen plays the ball in. Leno punches clear. Walker Peters again gets past his man. Harry Kane's there. And he should be finishing that, no doubt. We are going to go to a more cautious team mentality now for the final 35 minutes. See if we can catch Spurs on the break as Lacazette does excellently to get into the box. But uh, in the end, it's not a great finish. Taney on this left-hand side plays it inside to Mesut Ozil. Gwen Doozy, lots of space for Bellerin. Nobody marking him. You can drive, mate. And just don't shoot. 25 minutes to go in the match. Spurs again coming down this right-hand side with Walker Peters. Plays it back into Christian Eriksen to La Celso. Lucas Moura, Harry Winks, uh, Bert Leno. He was diving that for that before Harry Winks even took the strike. Lacazette now down this left-hand side. Receives the ball from Ozil. Tries to get the ball in. Walker Peters clears. And pff, that was great. Absolutely loved that highlight. 18 minutes to go. I would love for these highlights to just stop. And the time to just run out. But it's not going to happen. Kieran Tini plays back to Thomas Partley. Who plays it back to Luis. We're keeping possession well. And Tini's found himself in a pocket of space on this left hand side. Lacazette flicks a back room nicely. Where's this going? Uh, was that the highlight? Was that the highlight spot interactive? Why? With only five minutes or so remaining, we are going to make a change. Taney's going to drop back and he's going to come off for Kolasinac. We're also going to bring Malqui on for Hector Bellerin at right back. Just to keep things fresh and keep our eyes open for them uh, attacking down the wings. But it looks like we're going to get away with this. Harry Kane could not stop us. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang gets the two goals and Arsenal win the North London derby. And after that win against Spurs, they remain in 7th. We remain in 2nd. One point behind Liverpool. I believe Liverpool absolutely smashed Chelsea in the previous game. They won 7-0. <laughs> this is why this is such a challenge. Arsenal have got a good side. Um, particularly if you can raise some funds at the beginning of the season. But Liverpool are so dominant in the first season of pretty much every FM save I've started on Football Manager 2020. It will be a massive, massive thing for us if we are able to topple them in the very first season. Looking forward to the next episode, we've got to play Liverpool in the Premier League. So it will be a Liverpool-Burnley doubleheader, both at home. <laughs> Winnable games against Burnley, maybe not so much against Liverpool. I think we would definitely take a draw sitting looking at it now. And of course, in that period, January transfer window will be happening. So £80 million to spend. I definitely want a striker um, to play a back up to Lacazette and Aubameyang. Everything else is sort of seeing who's available who might improve our first 11 but anyway if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy